Oh, hello, Commissioner Burt here. Uh, the still ringless Commissioner Burt. Uh, this is the Orion Bar Fantasy NFL uh, recap of uh, the final. It's a bit late. I've been mad ill last week. I'm actually feeling a lot better today uh, for the first time. It, it, I've had, I had the flu and uh, an ear infection in, in each ear at the same time. I do not recommend it. I don't recommend it. If you're a sadist and you enjoy that kind of thing, if you enjoy just not eat, being able to eat and just not having the flu, then yeah, it's for you. But if not, just stay clear. Stay clear. Anyway, I digress. It wasn't a good night. New Year's Eve was not a good night uh, for all for the old Burtimore Ravens. We are now 75% of our way to the four falls of Buffalo. You know when the Buffalo Bills, I can't remember what year it was. It was like 19 dickety two or something like that. It was a long time ago. Um, the Buffalo Bills went to four straight Super Bowls didn't win any of them. That was my third straight Orion Bowl final. I'm still yet to win one. And I blame Lutz. Because he did so badly in the semi-final, I, I dropped him. And then I put another kicker in who got one point as well. Like literally two weeks in a row, I got one point from a kicker. Kickers! Goddamn kickers! If I'd have put Will Lutz in, I'd have won. I lost by like six points. You know, literally, if I'd have put Will Lutz in... I'd have won. Just absolutely devastated. But congratulations to the coaches' sons. Honestly, like they're fantastic. They're, it, every year, it's like the harlots and the coaches' sons. They're always the teams to beat. They just they they just seem to to get fantasy uh, NFL. So look, in order to be to just to be competitive with teams that are as good as that, just to I mean to be able to make it to three finals in a row says something about my lineup. So consider like consider I, I shouldn't have gotten to the final this year. I drafted terribly. My keepers were woeful. Absolutely woeful. I think I had two players from my original draft in my final lineup. I, I made a lot of moves on the wave wire, made a lot of trades, and you know what? I put together a team that got all the way to the final and that is something to be proud of. Um, I, I'm pretty pleased with that. Will I, will I ever get a ring? Who knows? Do you know what I mean? I, I have tons of them because, you know, I, I'm, I'm the commissioner. I, I, I buy all the, uh, all the trophies, all the rings. And I get and, do, and I give them out to, to the guys that, that make the league special. Thank you to everybody in the league as well. Honestly, it's been a terrific season. I've had an awful lot of fun. And, you know, on to the next. The story continues. It, in a lot of ways, it'll be, it'll be awful if I actually do eventually win one of these because... What, what, at that point, it'd be like credits roll, film's over. Do you know what I mean? He finally got one. Um, so yeah, I think in a lot of ways, it is better for the search to continue. Did I feel that way on the night? Absolutely not. I was furious. It ruined my New Year's Eve, honestly. Well, to be fair, it wasn't even really New Year's Eve for me. It was a Ryan Bowl final night that they happened to be doing some sort of celebration at 12 o'clock midnight. Uh, I was fuming. I went home. <laughs> I, I literally... I stormed off in a huff. I was in a real, real good huff. And rightfully so. At the end of the day, if you don't want to win this, why are you here? You know? I'm, I'm talking to you, Legion of Toilet. I'm kidding. Because that brings me on to the next big game, which was obviously the Toilet Bowl. The Alley Zona Tits. Congratulations. You managed to put up enough points. Because I had to check. Because um, it didn't put together an actual matchup. I figured out how to do it. So next year, there will be a proper Toilet Bowl bracket that you'll be able to follow along. But the, the, the uh, sorry, Legion. The Tits did put up more points than you in the final week. So that means that they win the, uh, the Toilet Bowl, thereby avoiding having the trophy. It means I I don't have to change the nameplate because that is the second year in a row the Legion of Hot Toilet have won the Toilet Bowl. Maybe consider changing the name. It might be a might be a bad omen. But either way, that means the Arizona Tits get first pick of the draft. Which brings me to neatly the 2024 draft order. I put it together already. As I said, the Arizona Tits get pick one. Now this is important. An important change next year. Uh, it's not going to a vote because I just feel like it's the best thing. I think most people are on board with this. Um, in order to make first pick actually be worthwhile, I'm changing from a snake draft to a linear draft. The snake draft, you go like, because in the snake draft, it reverses the draft order each time. And you know what? That's terrible for first pick. It really is because I had first pick in my other league and it was pointless. It was a pointless pick because you get one pick and then you get 20 people picking 
before you get a second one. So literally everybody's gone by that point. At least this way, everyone gets one pick in the first 10, everyone gets one pick in the second 10, and so on and so forth. So it will go from one to 10, and then it will repeat from one to 10, because it means that first pick is actually worth having. And it also means that, that teams further down, you know, that, that, that didn't finish so well this season, such as, you know, even the Legion of Hot Toilet, they'll be picking second in the draft. That brings me neatly back to the draft order. They'll be picking second. At least, the second pick, they can they can build a roster, and I'm hoping that it will even out the teams a little bit. Just give everybody a chance to to have a good season, like every 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 couple of years, uh, depending on injuries and things like that, um, and terrible trades. It, it all happens, you know. It's it's, it's a lot of fun to follow. Um, but yeah, so Legion of Hot Toilet will be picking second. Uh, San Diego Harlots managed to beat the uh, team with no Shameth uh, to get that coveted third pick. So third pick goes to San Diego Harlots. Uh, the team with no Shameth obviously coming in at fourth. Then you've got the Dallas Trey Gorillas who whooped Baby Got Dak in the final game of the season. Congratulations to you, uh, Gorillas. I think actually you've got a really solid team. You've got Brees Hall. Brees Hall's very, very good. He, he's an outstanding player. And look, if they have Aaron Rodgers next year... But I think my, my biggest surprise on the Gorillas team this year was how poor Tony Pollard was. I didn't see that coming. Honestly, I thought with Brees Hall and Tony Pollard there, I, I just thought that you'd have an excellent season. But you know what? You've got a good draft position for, for next season, so that you can build on that. And I fully expect to see the Dallas Trey Gorillas in the playoffs next year. Then you've got Baby Drop Dak bringing up at sixth place, uh, who dropped Dak and did... it. I'll be honest, your trades weren't brilliant this year, mate. You, you, your trades are normally top draw, but you you did some weird trades that ended up with you kind of... I don't know. I think you kind of shot yourself in the foot a little bit. But... I respect the amount of trades that you do. I, I like the volume. You know, quantity over quality was the name of the game for Baby Got Dak this season because it was just it was the, just sheer, the sheer number of trades. You couldn't keep track of who was who was being traded for who. But ultimately, it meant that you didn't make the playoffs. And I think that maybe less trades, but better trades next season. But thank you for Travis ATN. I really, really appreciate that one. Uh, you've got the team with no name is bringing up at seventh. Then you've got the Forbes Niners uh, coming in at number eight. And the Baltimore Ravens obviously coming in at number nine. And the tenth pick will go to the champions, the reigning kings, the coaches' sons. So look, I'm going to be doing, uh, uh, we need to organise a team meet, I'll put it in the WhatsApp group, uh, just so that we can meet up, maybe watch one of the championship games and I can dish out the prizes. I know Dak, I still owe you a ring, uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not big on posting these things out. Um, because uh, you're in London, so I know that you don't venture out of London too much, but obviously we have the games next season. Perhaps we could maybe meet up for a beer uh, before one of the London games next season. I'll pop the ring in my pocket and just deliver it in person because I, I feel like that is the better way to do it. It, ju it just is. So um, uh, I look forward to seeing all of you. Like I said, I'll put it in the WhatsApp group, try and organise um, just a meet up for maybe one of the championship games. Uh, we can all have a beer, watch, watch the championship games. And uh, yeah, and I can dish out the prizes. We've got the new trophy that's going to be going to to uh, the coach's sons. It's going to be f we'll, we'll, it'll be a fun night. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so that brings me neatly onto the wildcard weekend to see what's going to be setting up these champion these championship games. So yeah, you've got um, uh, Fla Ugh, sadly Fla Joe Flacco flacked around and he got found out. The, the, one of my favourite memes last week just here was uh, Flack around. Find out. Because I love Playoff Flacco. Playoff Flacco is the man. I absolutely love it. And you know what? I was I was surprised by the Browns versus the Texans because I didn't think... that I thought it would be closer than it was. I thought it would be a relatively low-scoring game. Uh, because, just because the Browns' defence is so legit. It's very, very good. So for the Texans to put 44 points against that defence... That's uh, that's that's worrying for every other team that have made the playoffs. So, yeah, you know what? A bit gutted the Browns were out. I did have a bet on them at 34-1 to 1 just because I felt like there was some magic there. Sometimes you need some magic. Magic and a good defence, and the Browns had both. But, my God, the, the Texans moved the ball through the air extremely well. That that connection between CJ Stroud and Nico Collins is is a real worry for every playoff team. I might check the odds on what the Texans are like to, to win it all. They, they looked... Absolutely outstanding. And then obviously it was very cold in Kansas. Cold in Kansas. Tyreek was still on fire, but Tyreek's fire was not enough to to, to stay. It, it was more like glowing embers by the end of it because 
even even Tyreek Hill, as on fire as he was, that cold snap minus 20 in Kansas was just enough to snuff out uh, Tyreek Hill and also snuff out the Miami Dolphins. Tyreek Hill still did put up a score, though, uh, which is good for my terrible bet. So I'll quickly just... Um, so my terrible bet for... I haven't gone with um, winners and losers. I don't like the odds that you get on them. So I've gone with any time touchdown scorers. So um, the first one came in. I, I actually... Didn't put my bet on. <laughs> I forgot to put my bets on until after the Browns game had kicked off. So, I mean, I was going to have a Murray Cooper uh, in in that game. And I'm glad that I didn't because he didn't score. So, that no, that was a, do- a, a bullet dodged <laughs> in a lot of ways. So, I ended up only being able to bet on you know, Miami, uh, Kansas onwards. So, my anytime touchdown score came in. Tyreek Hill, he did get one. So, I was pretty happy with that. The only score that Miami got, uh, and it was Tyreek Hill. So, woof, thank God. So, my bet is still going. My bet is still live. I then have CD Lamb to score anytime for Dallas. Cooper Cup to score anytime for LA. Long shot, I've got George Pickens to score any time for Pittsburgh. Now I've got Mike Evans to score any time for Tampa Bay. Uh, all those together, that is like 63 to 1. So I'll put £2.50 on that, which means I'm going to lose £2.50 by the end of tomorrow's championship games. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, looking at the actual games, I mean, Cowboys versus Green Bay Packers, I kind of, I could see an upset in that one only because. Um, the Cowboys in the playoffs tend to to bottle it. They do. Come on, they do. They do bottle it quite a lot. To be fair, Let, let's right. If we're being fair, if we're being fair here, come on, be fair. The Cowboys do bottle it in the playoffs, but I don't know. Green Bay are not what Green Bay used to be, but they have looked good, uh, you know, in recently. You know, so momentum is a thing. They do have the momentum. I could see an upset in that one only because. No, the, the Cowboys tend to really peter off in the playoffs and Green Bay have looked good recently. That's the only reason. Uh, C.D. Lamb will probably score, though. At least I hope so. Fingers crossed. Cooper Cup, uh, I've got, yeah, Detroit Lions against uh, the LA Rams. I like the Lions in that one. I have backed the Lions to win win the whole Super Bowl. They're at 17-1. to 1. Uh, Obviously, if they win, the, I, think, um, I think they are the... F- are they? Yeah, they're the favourites in that one. Yeah. Rightfully so. Look, the Lions have got a very good run game. They're very good through the air. They've looked good on defense. They've kind of got every element that it takes to be to, to go for a really good playoff run. And they've had a hell of a season. Uh, and, I, and I just like the story. I enjoy it. I do. And then you've got uh, Buffalo Bills against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Again, another one where there could be an upset here. Because the problem... Right, I like Josh Allen. Josh Allen's a gunslinger. He took me all the way to a fantasy final, but it, like he he did most of that himself because he averaged 25 fantasy points a game because he runs in for a lot of touchdowns and he's a gunslinger. He throw it downfield and he just and he he leads the lead in interceptions, but he also leads the lead in touchdowns. So he just, he he puts up enough points to 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 mitigate the 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 damage of the interceptions and that's that's what and I love watching Josh Allen play the Bills don't move the ball particularly well on the ground that is a problem the Pittsburgh Steelers have Najee Harris and they have the um oh I, I can't I can't remember what his name is but they, they've got another running back as well who's also really good Jalen something I think anyway I digress. Uh, through the air, you've got you've got Pickens as well, who's been looking good. Uh, you've got uh, you know uh, Mason Rudolph has been their savior. Mason Rudolph at quarterback has looked fantastic for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're a team that seem to have just really come together at the end of the season at the right time. Again, I could see an upset there. The Steelers are going to be heavy underdogs in that one, but the Steelers know about playoff football. Tomlinson knows about playoff football. Tomlinson knows how to pull together a team to go on a playoff run. Buffalo Bills, they're 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 dangerous, but they're they're like a they're like a fighter who can who can hit really hard, who's got these really you know big kind of like outlandish like punches, but they leave their chin open. The Buffalo Bills can be vulnerable. Their their chin is often in the air, and sometimes they they will get knocked out. Mike, I've got uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Philadelphia Eagles. Again, it's another one where, look, the Tampa Bay Bucks, they're going to be underdogs. But they're good through the air. 
Uh, Rashad White is very good on the ground. Their defense isn't terrible. Their kicker is awful because um, he lost me a fantasy final, so he's dead to me. And you've got, you know, Baker Mayfield, he's a bit hit or miss, but you know what? There's a nice story there. Baker Mayfield's found a home. He's gotten them into the postseason. He's got a great contract as a result of it. I like that story. I enjoy the narrative. I would love to see Baker Mayfield go on a playoff run here. Philadelphia Eagles, brotherly shove, the tush push, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically, if they get to third and one, like they're making it every time. Anything and one. The brotherly shove. I don't know how you, you you combat that. It seems like the other teams are struggling to find a way as well. But Jalen Hurts is a lot of fun to watch. He's got a lot of weapons. AJ Brown is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, look. The Philadelphia Eagles are probably going to get that one. I think, I think, the, I think the, 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 the fairy story uh, ends there for Baker Mayfield. But Wildcard Weekend, I've seen some stranger things happening than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beating the Eagles. So look, that look, all of these games, I'm just I'm excited to to watch. I really am, like I love Wild Card Weekend. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So yeah, uh, that's uh, and that's everything. So that's yeah, that's the 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 Orion Bowl done for another season. Thank you to everybody involved. Uh, we're hitting the playoffs now. So um, good luck if any of your teams are in the playoffs. I hope they do really well. Uh, I hope if you've got any bets on for the playoffs that they all come off and that you get loads of money at the end of it. And we have a terrific Super Bowl. I'm really looking forward to it. Until next season, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.